you know, or even uh, Seth, you know, or Saturn. But uh, I have to honestly say the inability to open yourself up to see the correlation objectively is really just a it's a product of systematic religious programming, which we are definitely trying to break out of because in that there's no spiritual development only you know more religious indoctrination but uh set or satan represents the humanity of a spirit being you know knowing that we have different aspects and components to us your human aspect or your human component uh is represented by set or satan it's uh that connection to a material reality and the part of you um, or a part of the function of that energy that part of you is to constantly test your commitment to the spirit world in that this energy or that set energy or eshu energy it will always present opportunities at the crossroads to either glory or bask in or even enhance your earthly human experience this can this can come in many different forms. It could come, you know, in the form of pleasure uh, or even revenge. Um, anything that will allow you to glorify in your flesh and manifest yourself as a flesh being unhindered. You know, that's when we're dealing with that Elegba or Ganesha or, or um, set, Satan, Eshu energy. All right. Um, the energy we're speaking of here is, is also often spoken of as ego. And in the most new age of spirit studies, the first thing we're told to do is to remove all ego from the equation in order to realize our connectedness to all forces in existence. You know, um, ego could even be, if you want to make it an acronym, let's say EGO is um, edging God out. Right. Um, or I've heard, a, you know, a brother of mine used to say uh, easing God out same thing edging or easing but um the problem with with this notion of completely removing ego is that part of our soul has reincarnated on the physical plane for a reason uh, you can liken this uh plane of existence to a prison i mean i personally think that this dimension that we live on is, is a prison to our soul and a prison to our pineal organ but um in any event, whether you see it that way or not, the truth is we're here in one form or fashion. So, with that said, to remove your physical ego, which you resides in the root awareness. chakra. And this chakra point, uh, the root or the base chakra, they call it sometimes, it uh, lies at the base of your spine and its color is a, is a fiery red tone. Uh, it's the chakra that keeps you connected to your uh, physical reality and grounds you to life here on earth. It's, it's a very important chakra point, you know, and it's oftentimes, um, it's not looked at properly because uh, in this society, many people never go past the root chakra because it deals with physicality, you know, um, survival. Uh, sexuality you know your base animalistic desires one could say and um, you can just even look at um, or listen to certain forms of music if you want to call it that or certain forms of um, culture and we can see that it completely resides within the base chakra where there's no kind of uh, spiritual element but it's all based on the material so because of that sometimes the root chakra gets a bad rap but um, it's just as important as any other chakra point. Uh, but through this chakra point, you know, Eshu or Elegba reminds us that awareness of our humanity is needed for our journey through this life form. You know, and often we see people who are like kind of gathering information that deals with uh, esoteric and occult information. And what happens is they begin to kind of stay in a world that's completely mystical and philosophical and um you know fantasy based almost to a point and it's like where they say you know they become so heavenly minded they're no earthly good and 
Eshu keeps us grounded or that that root chakra or elegba keeps us grounded to each level of reality that we live in you know um and make sure that we realize that there must be there must be a, a practical manifestation of anything that we acquire or we learn you know he doesn't allow us to keep a, a surplus of things of dead information that serves no purpose uh, it keeps us from staying in the clouds or flying off the handle you could say um, but or you could even picture this energy like a, um, a person flying a kite on the beach and the person holds the kite string and, and the spool tightly and the stronger the person's grip to the kite string and the spool the more the kite can be allowed to ascend and soar so a shoe is like you're anchoring in the physical reality, but also wow, the gatekeeper so into sober. the spirit. Right? He only drinks lemonade. You know, um, this trickster, this trickster character really represents Afro's humanity, as Afro is in, has become an indiscriminate killer based on his position in the world and what he has to do, and for the most part has seen so much horror in his life it uh pushes him to abandon much of his humanity uh we could say but of course you know you should watch it and you draw your own conclusions but uh interesting enough the voices for both of the characters are voiced by samuel jackson and towards the end of the movie we realize that this trickster character is actually an aspect of afro's own nature and culture i mean i'm sorry nature and character and he does and says all of the things that Afro inwardly feels. He's a figment of, um, we could say, Afro's imagination, uh, an illusionary projection. And at the uh, climatic ending of the movie, uh, the sidekick is he's either killed or fade, fades away. I think he's killed. And um, lets Afro know that he won't be able to go with him into the next stage of the battle. At this moment, we realize, you know, in, in watching it, that this is basically Afro shedding his humanity um, in order to succeed, you know, at the next level. So, he, you know, he sheds his humanity and his identity. Uh, but, you know, I, I won't give too much of it away, but I would strongly urge you to check out Afro Samurai. There's a part one and a part two. I think part two is Afro Samurai Resurrection or something like that. But, you know, good movie. Especially if you're into um, anime, I guess that's what they call it, anime. But um, it's a good movie nonetheless. And, um, you know, this is a representation of another aspect of this energy, which is the fool. And, you know, Eshu represents becoming the fool in order to connect with divinity. You know, losing oneself, uh, not taking human life so seriously. You know, even in the tarot deck, you'll find that there's a card, the fool. And the fool is the one who's really closest to divinity in many ways, you know, closest to the supreme being, the one who loses themselves. And uh, this is, you know, one of the reasons that Elegba or Eshu is often represented as a child wandering in the woods, you know, a trickster child. And that reminds us that in order to enter the spirit world, we must shed the layers that we've accumulated of brittle egoic identity you know become the fool uh, become the trickster uh, it's interesting also that issue